Hey guys, it's Philip, and this is another episode of ZTAPS Hangout. And this time we are welcoming Rob Jacob from Britain, and we are going to talk about a few things about music, life, and other things. So I'm glad that you are joining us, and I hope you will enjoy this. So maybe for the start, like we don't know each other for a very long time, so. Hi. Yeah, you are a kind of fresh member of uh, ZTAPS of Sturge. So maybe uh, like for my introduction, like w what is rap? Like how that started? Like, <laughs> or... um, how did rap start? That's an interesting question. It was just uh, the music I wanted to make outside of like my sort of main, main band really. Um, I didn't have any set goals of what I wanted to make. I just what I just knew I wanted to make what I wanted to make and nothing else and I was the whole point kind of was to be um I didn't want to commit to a single style so that's why the name I don't like the name by the way it, I'm still struggling with it I just couldn't I literally couldn't name a band at the time I could not name it I went through about 40 different options and I stuck with it because it's vague it could be anything and that's kind of, so I've kind of accepted it as being a vague thing but it just started as a as an outlet to have other than my sort of main band I was in. Well, I'm in still. So. So so what's your other band like? What kind of project is that? So it's a, it's an extreme brutal death metal band called Enslavement that um me and a friend all uh, all school friends we started about eight or nine years ago now. We've done, you know, done an album, we've done some good shows, we've done a lot of stuff. And yeah, a few years ago, I just wanted to do something new. And that's where I am now. I've just sort of doing my own thing. Um, yeah, it's weird playing. It's weird playing two very different styles. But I, I think they kind of, they do kind of feed into each other a little bit. Like all of the, the anger and frustration is in the metal. And then like, try and be a bit, more normal in the other stuff, I guess. You know, explore other topics with rap, really. Yeah. So, how how did you like like okay? So, what made you kind of switch to this like kind of more folkish, acoustic side? Like, was it something that you were missing in the like kind of metal scene, or what, for you personally, what what it was like? It was actually, um, it was black metal that led me to making raps, I think, because mm -hmm. I used to make a bit of a bit of black metal as well. And I always, always loved the quiet bits of black metal where you had like reverb and guitars and stuff. And I was really ignorant for a long time. I didn't realize there was an entire genre that was sort of the quiet stuff of black metal because essentially like shoegaze and sort of lo-fi folk there are parts where it could so easily be the quiet bits of black metal. Mm -hmm. And I'd had no idea that that stuff really existed because I was just so, all I listened to from about 2009 to about 2015 was, was death metal and black metal. I didn't listen to anything else at all. But then just discovering my love for the quiet parts of black metal led me down into shoegaze and into like sort of, I, what you'd say, I guess you'd call it indie folk and ambient music as well. So it all, it all goes back to metal and black metal really that led me where I am today. But I felt, yeah, it blew my mind when I discovered that there was an entire world that was exploring what I liked, which is only a, a fraction of black metal. So it's quite weird, but yeah, it was interesting. And I think that, I think the darkness definitely is still in wrapped that is in metal. And I try not to fight that. I don't really know how to make positive music, but maybe I should try. Maybe I should try that one day. I still, yeah, I don't know how to do it. Yeah. So, so do you still like after like doing this kind of new project? Like, do you still feel like there's enough for you for for your other band, like creatively? I think because they're they're very different processes, but I mean when when I started putting a lot more attention into Wrapped, we'd just finished um, our first full length album. And death, uh, death metal is really difficult genre of music to record. 
it, it took us about two years. No, it took us, yeah, two years from writing, maybe two and a half years from writing to having, you know, a finished album out. And after that, all of us in the band were just sort of pretty exhausted. So we sort of all, we, we all have other projects anyway, but yeah, I'd say they're very different. They're different styles. So I sort of can compartmentalize myself and some days I'll work on one style and other days I'll work on the other, but it does come and go between what ones I can work on. There are sometimes I physically can't work on metal and there are times I physically can't work on soft stuff as well. So I kind of just try and balance it, but so yeah, I'm still working on working out how to be honest. Yeah, so, so what is for you personally like the biggest difference like making music for rap and music for your other project? Um, well, I suppose in the other projects I don't handle everything. So I guess the main difference is I can I can write some ideas and then I can abandon them, send them off to someone and then they sort of the others, you know, take over sometimes, you know, you know, what I mean, the, the process is a collaboration and that's very different to I'm just on my own with raps I can't no I mean I have people that I trust to listen to it but it's a de it's a very it's a much more lonely um but rewarding in a very different way as well because what what you know what how a song comes out is it's up to me nothing else but so it's nice to have both of those things but yeah it's good to have both types of writing that I do so so if you like like look at the future like do you want to still like balance both of the projects or like kind of have maybe better balance in it or maybe switch between them or what what is your plan with that like do you think it's possible to keep it like this i don't know i mean yeah i think about it quite a lot to be honest, I do wonder what I'm going to do in the future. I mean, no matter what, I will do music on my own for myself. I know that. That's a fact. I just hope I will be able to continue doing other things because um, they complement each other. And um, I think if I only did rapped, I think the quality, I mean, I'm not saying it's amazing, but the quality of the material would definitely go down because I think if I concentrate on one thing too much, it just, I lose track of it. It's the time away from it's the time away from things that sort of cements things in my mind and I won't put anything out unless it's unless it's ready and I won't rush anything so that's why having two is good or three yeah yeah so so like do you think that rap would be different if you didn't have your other brand um yeah it's impossible to know um I think it would probably be a bit more maybe more like folky as in like when I think of folk I think of like sort of you know English folk music in the 70s um I imagine it would be a bit more like that and it probably wouldn't have like the use of reverb and maybe the lyrical content wouldn't be you know there's a there's a melancholy there's a sort of melancholy that runs through everything that comes out of um when I write lyrics and that maybe that would be different. But yeah, I, I can't imagine I can't imagine what it would be like. But I'm glad I'm glad to have um I'm very grateful that I spent so long doing metal because I learned I think it gives you quite a unique perspective on other genres of music. It's yeah, so, so what is your like biggest uh, like source of inspiration like for for this project like for rap? Um, where do you find it? I can't really control it. I've been thinking about the. I've been thinking about this a lot because of, um, you know, having lockdowns and stuff and trying to be inspired. And the main thing I've learned is I just cannot, cannot force it whatsoever. I've really tried to push it, and you know, I've got the re the results of pushing it on my hard drive, and it's just not good. So, I don't know. I think living. I actually just think living day to day life is probably the most inspiring thing. I can't, I mean, I know people romanticize, um, you know, the, the artist being locked away. And I thought for a long time that would be great for me. When the lockdown happened, I wasn't really that bothered at all. 
about having to stay in but i need i need to hear human beings having conversations primarily and i need to do boring boring uh boring stuff you know for the good things to happen i don't know how people do just music full time i don't know how they do it i could i don't know if i could actually do it okay so uh what do you do like for your living what what is your uh, like kind of um, job or at the moment i'm off well, the last few years i've been a technician at a college so i look after for the art and media department so i look after all the cameras and order paint in and help students with their projects put up the exhibitions i look, yeah i look it's really interesting working working in the fine arts and visual arts because i have no training in the arts whatsoever i just kind of stumbled into this job um but i've been there three years but it's very inspiring being around people painting all day because you learn just yeah the approach i've tried to take some of what i've learned from how people paint into music and that's definitely been inspiring um yeah the money is terrible but i love the job so i'm kind of i'm kind of a bit stuck but yeah it's been a very i'd recommend anyone creative to go and work as a technician in a college i think anyone it doesn't matter what type of art or music you do i think it's a really good experience so do you do you use that opportunity to promote your music uh i try i try to keep it separate actually cuz i mean i've made mistakes with that in the past where i've showed students and maybe like i'll walk in and they're listening to my music and i find that um that can be quite tough as though you know i don't want, i get a bit self conscious and i'm never really fully happy with anything everything i do there's always some part of the track i don't like and if i walk into a room that thing that i don't like will always be what what i can hear straight away but i've i've actually discovered some great music through the students that i've worked with like i'll walk in and i'll hear something they're playing and i'm like what's this and i'll go over and i just they'll just just they'll just have some because they you know obviously they they're all about sort of 17 to 19 years old so they have a much more you know directly modern recent uh, knowledge of music whereas i'm already kind i'm not, i still discover new music but i'm already kind of getting to the point where the discovery process is slower and i, I need to actually work on listening to new stuff more but yeah i've i've heard some really good stuff from the students and like what what is people reaction when you tell them that you have an extreme metal band oh it's amazing <laughs> i mean yeah i i get it i what i'll i'll say this first i do understand why people do this but but i mention it and people are like oh i'd love to hear it and then i put it on and i just watch their faces drop and they sort sometimes they'll they'll sort of go like you know nod their head a little bit <laughs> and i can tell they're suffering and they just don't want to listen to it so i usually put them out of their misery and i'm like it's okay and i'll turn it down but yeah no most people just don't don't understand whatsoever <laughs> but i get it cuz it is from do, i mean from doing from doing rap especially i i realize that death you know brutal death metal is it is horrible like it's a horrible genre to listen to and it's supposed to be so i do get it i completely get why people just don't understand it do you also like listen to a lot of metal bands in your free time not um i go through phases not as much as i used to definitely not as much it's more i kind of i have to be in a certain mood for it and i i run i go running quite a lot and that's when if i'm not feeling that energized that day then metal will always make my runs better but yeah it's something i need to work on is is sort of getting back into more more like i'm a bit out of touch with the last few years of what's come out in metal um but in lockdown i think i've definitely returned to listening to stuff that i listened to as a teenager like stuff that used to obsess me i haven't heard in years i've been going back to and some of it i just don't i don't understand i don't i don't get it anymore but some of it's great and i've been enjoying that about lockdown the option you know the time to just dig back into old things. Yeah, for example like I know that uh in Slovakia the metal scene is pretty like uh 
yeah, kind of like a community, like always people mm. like working together and like kind of taking care of each other or just like being more communicative. Uh, is it like that in Britain as well? Or yeah, yeah, it's a very strong scene because it's you know it's really underground and it has to it has to have a strong scene to survive really. Um, yeah, I mean, in where I'm where I was living for a long time in Brighton, there's quite a strong scene there and everyone knows each other. All the bands know each other. And um, the great thing about that is when a smaller band starts in Brighton, they're almost always existing members of the scene that go to shows. So it's actually really easy for smaller bands to get shows because they're in, they've been turning up to the gigs for the whole time anyway. So it is a really powerful example of of community I think and and to be honest I don't feel like I have that at all with raps I don't yeah it's either it's a it's a much I think the whole sort of indie folky thing is is much bigger but I still feel like an outsider to it because I spent so long wearing a black t-shirt and having long hair you know so I haven't built up the sort of community yet but I hope to that's one of the things I want to work on I want to try and meet more people that make similar things so, so for the next album with your other project, you are going to grow longer hair. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm done. I used to have hair. I used to have hair down to my uh, down to my waist. I think I'm done with it. It was too much work. Because <laughs> I've, I've got curly hair as well. It was. All right, cool. Yeah, I don't miss that. It was a nightmare. It looked good though <laughs> on the stage. It looked good, but it wasn't. Yeah. It wasn't worth it for the the cost of shampoo. Yeah. It, it, I was always amazed when I met like people from metal scene. They were so nice, like always welcoming, always like really kind of heartwarming people. And it's 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 a little bit weird. Like if you listen to the music, you you kind of hear a lot of energy and sometimes a lot of anger. Hmm. And it's like kind of with a big contrast, like with how actually the people are. And why do you think like the people are or the music is not affecting like how the people are behaving? Mm, I could answer the question. I'm trying to think how to answer it without being offensive. I think the, the scene that metal in general can attract, you know, maybe slight people that don't quite fit in in, in conventional ways, maybe. Mm -hmm. um, I think that's I think that's a good way to put it yeah it can attract people that maybe need you know they feel like they don't fit in and they want they want a community kind of thing and then but also because the music itself is quite abrasive and people don't understand it that gives you another reason for to have a community so I'd say but yeah I'm not I'm not um saying anything you know bad about metal or anything it's just I think it, 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 it attracts outsiders there are other genre, there are other genres of music that do I mean probably like you know noise extreme noise music you know you probably get some pretty um, interesting interesting characters in that as well but yeah and I think the, sen the sense of community and sort of feeling you're a part of something underground definitely attracts people to it yeah, so maybe let's go a little bit back to the last album or like there are two albums one, one is yeah. a little bit different from the yeah. other uh maybe let's back to none of the, we, none of this will matter sorry <laughs> yeah. uh like w what was the process behind making this album like um it was really it was stressful it was the most stressful album i've ever done um I've done a few albums on my own before under different names, but not not serious projects, just little things. But it was definitely the most stressful album I've done. Um, and I got really ill during the start of it. So I made, um, there's a reason why, if you listen to it, there's a reason why Siren Bay is electric guitar and it sounds like shoegaze and the rest doesn't. And that's because just after writing Siren Bay, I got really ill um, and I couldn't play electric guitar for a very long time um by what and then after a few months of not being very well i managed i realized i could play the classical guitar just because um it's a bigger instrument the, the the neck of the guitar is wider 
and um, the strings are softer. You don't have to press down as hard. So getting ill made me have to learn basically a different instrument because I'd never recorded with a nylon string. But interestingly, the moment that I realized I could play a nylon string and it was a new instrument, just songs just appeared out of nowhere. It was really strange. I've never, I, it's the, I've never had that happen before where like there was just ideas dropping out of the sky and working. Usually I, I have to fight for them a bit more, but the hardest part was actually recording it because um, I was having a problem with my hands at the time and they would go numb after about a minute of playing. So, so yeah, I don't want to say too much because it will ruin some of the songs, but some of the songs took a huge amount of engineering to make because I just wasn't able to play the instrument properly at the time. There's one, I won't say the song, but there's one song that honestly took about seven hours of me sitting in front of a microphone to to record so it was yeah it was it was interesting looking back now because i'm much better now looking back it was really interesting actually and i think not being very well actually made it better in a weird way i think you know it wasn't just melancholy music for the sake of it i was melancholy at the time you know i was going through some stuff at the time so it was it was sincere. There's nothing. There's nothing made up on that album. All of it's true. <laughs> so, uh, I think you can hear it in the music. It's yeah. Um, it's not fake, you know. Like yeah. Sometimes you can see when people are trying to be sad in yeah in a fake way. Some are trying to kind of put themselves in some position. But I don't know. Like whole album feels for me a little bit of melancholy or sadness and it's it's special and yeah i really like it and thank you so, so if it, that was like kind of i know that it was part of like hard process and for you or just like kind of making that together do you think that it it has brought you something that uh you can like use for maybe new material in the future like Maybe you, you, you brought up that, that new instrument. So hmm. is that something that you want to maybe try more next or? Yeah, definitely. What, um, what is what is like the future kind of like take for this album? I definitely want more classical guitar. I've been learning that by accident. I've been, I know I've learned it by accident. It was the only instrument I could play easily. <laughs> But since I finished that album, I've just kept playing it and I've got um, things I'm self-taught. So people that play classical guitar would think I was absolutely appalling. They'd probably, they probably wouldn't agree with my playing style. It's not traditional at all. I don't, I don't, I was never taught classical guitar. So I'm just fumbling in the dark, basically. But I love the instrument. Um, and I'm not fed up. I think I know what I know what I'm like. I think I've got one more album of classical guitar and then I'll probably hate it and then I'll stop using it and go back to electric guitar but I'm trying to make the next one so far I have got some ideas and trying to make it more technical in some ways but it's a da it's a dangerous line I don't want it to be so technical that it just isn't interesting to listen to but the demos that I have got there's some there's some fiddly stuff on there that I'm trying to embrace a bit more um, but I I have a long-term plan. I do eventually want to finish what I started with Siren Bay because that was, I had a plan which was to make a Shugo's album mm -hmm. and it didn't happen, but it's, it's on my list. One day I will do it. I don't know when. Sure. Yeah. So like it's been a few months after the release. So how do you see the album now? Like what? What is what is your personal feedback from the album? Um, I think there's probably some production things that I wouldn't do again. Um, yeah, they're mostly just production things that I wouldn't do. Um, I find it weird. I've only really started to process it recently, and I can't actually believe uh, believe that I made some of it. Um, it feels like a different person, but I kind of always experience that when I make when I release something. Because, you know, I've released quite a few other things in the past and under different names. And I kind of believe it takes about 
at least three or four months to really understand what it is you've done. Um, but I know I am proud of it. I'm definitely proud of it. But the fact that Siren Bay was what it was supposed to be, sometimes I wonder what would happen if I had actually managed to make the whole thing. And I think it probably wouldn't, I wouldn't be as proud of it, I don't think. I think it would be maybe a little bit more generic because it's a weird album. It shouldn't, you know, it's a weird album because I didn't plan to make it. That's why it's weird, basically. Yeah, sure. Um, but no, yeah, I'm, I'm proud of it. And um, uh, what Demi did with it as well was great. She's always amazing. Um, yeah, like uh, if I ever get stuck with anything, she's the one person that I trust. She's, we have a very similar sort of taste. So I'll send something to her and she'll send it back. And it's just always good, basically. <laughs> Whenever she sends something back, it's always good. Cool. So uh, may maybe let's get to a newer release we did together. And how, how that comes together? Like, okay, we have the extreme metal band, we have the folky rap project, and then we have Drow, which is... I know. It's uh, bad, isn't it? It's, yeah. I yeah, can't that's... decide. <laughs> it's actually like, to be honest, for me, it was kind of gamble because... Uh, me, for uh, me, it's a gamble as well. <laughs> yeah, it's like, we've been talking about it, like, okay, so yeah. should we do it under the rap name? Should we do it under different moniker? Is it for releasing on Z tapes? And to be honest, I always wanted to have something that is like crossing the boundaries or mm -hmm. going yeah. off the limits like a wild card yeah yeah and i get that yeah i i i was never sure if the audience is ready or if if z tapes is a platform that can offer variety of genres hmm. and from my experience like always when i really something that is a little bit off or less poppy or less mm -hmm. kind of catchy in some way um it's harder to kind of kind of promote it or find maybe the same connection but i i found like for example this album especially like the atmosphere like fits perfectly for me yeah like, i wouldn't mind to have it another <laughs> you know like that's yeah and i, I was like uh I was pretty surprised that even people took it or are yeah. still taking it pretty nicely, I think. Yeah. This is really good. Yeah, I think it's, I mean, I completely understand why someone who enjoyed None of This Would Matter would think, what, what's this guy doing? Um, the reason it exists is very simple, which is I always like to work on multiple things. So whilst I was on a day that I sat down to make music and I couldn't be, you know, I wasn't in the right mood to make metal or folk or indie folk, whatever you want to call it. I don't know what genre it is. Um, that's when I would make Drouth or Druth. Um, it was just, it, that kind of music kind of is like the third part of me that occasionally I like to explore. Um, and that, that took ages, that album. I worked on it very slowly f since 2018. So I would I would work on it for a, a few weeks, get fed up with it, zip it up on my hard drive and just ignore it for another six months. And I went about eight months without even working on it at one point. Um, so it's just something that I dip into. But I'm yeah, I'm, I'm proud of that one. I had a very, very, very specific goal with that album, which was how much can you do with loops and um, creating weird sort of clashing dissonant moments where samples start to loop on top of each other in weird ways. Um, there's no, as there's almost no synthesizers on it whatsoever. All of it is classical music final that I would then cut up. And this, it sounds quite like a lazy technique but it's really quite difficult to get any nice results out of it. Um, but when you do, there's something very unique and special about it that you, you could, 
you could sit down for years and never come up with what you come up with when you take a, you know a classical music or any sample and just distort it destroy it stretch it like the humans can't do that basically so i think yeah i think it, it was successful in its goal and the, and the reason i decided not to put it out under a different name is just because i don't know when i think i've finished that chapter now i think i've done everything i can do with a techno beat and classical music personally i don't know if i want to do any more so and because of that i didn't want to put it out under a name and then just no one will hear it ever again you know because if i put it out under a different name you know you know a few people would hear it that's fine you know a few people may return to it but it will get lost basically forever which is you know there's nothing wrong with that it's just what happens to music so i decided to keep it and it would just be this weird thing i did and people will look back if because i hope you know hopefully i'm still making other things and people can just look back and check out if they want to but it's not it's not supposed to be a huge statement or anything but i'm proud of it definitely you should be it's really great <laughs> i i really enjoy it like and uh it's more kind of like yeah definitely music that you kind of listen to not something that you will take yeah to a show or something you know or yeah kind of like um, offline experience but one thing that i want to touch like what i think it's kind of weird that still people always want to kind of d create different moniker when they are making something that is a little bit different from their usual music hmm. and i don't know why but i find it like it's not even wise like hmm. from from marketing or even just like like strategy for your kind of project like why to kind of create something that is that needs like two you are kind of creating two projects that needs the same amount of attention for both yeah so yeah. you have to have like two times more energy to kind of focus on both even like just promoting it or yeah yeah whatever. And I can understand, like for example, like yeah, your band is something different from your yeah, of course, yeah, personal thing. But if you are making your your own music, why just not to have everything under one name? Even though it's it can be yeah, like you did, like something that is completely off on different kind of uh, levels of kind of maybe even like different type of fans or different yeah uh genre wise so i think you did you did you did good choice when you decided like to use the same and mm. and i think it fits well as well it's not like something that doesn't go together well or it's something that is separated too much mm. so i think that was a good choice and i recommend everyone who hears that don't create more monikers like <laughs> It's I even I know in myself I have like United cassettes. Also, we have the blog Star Trek, and there is the Z tapes and whatever other else projects I'm involved in, and it's it's getting frustrating you know, mm. for me, kind of like remembering that you have all these kind of projects that you have to take care of or think about promoting it or just like pushing it. So definitely it's not worth trying well so, i think um sorry yeah, I, yeah. i think no. i think um i just didn't want to do it again because i i've had other monikers in the past and i just i literally it actually came down to laziness in a way i just could not face making another band name another page <laughs> um another hi i've just released my first thing please listen to it you know after you know just didn't want to do it it was laziness but also i think it's just a lot of the time people like i did start i did also start to notice i did a tiny bit of research into like what people actually listen to and i did find a weird sort of crossover between you know slow core indie folk and sort of ambient like there were clearly people that understood both And that combined with just being lazy, I just I just didn't do it. 
I just thought I'm just can't I can't do it. I'm not creating another page. I mean, would you would you would you want to take on another like well, you wouldn't you wouldn't create a new blog or something, would you? If you wanted to cover you were saying you've already have three things. Like how do you feel about do you want to make a whole another thing now? No. Like <laughs> ideally I would I would just narrow it to one, but it's not it's not possible just one for one reason because uh I don't I I want like for example my blog it for example Nadine is helping me mm. uh with running it and if I ever decide to quit it I have someone mm. who can take it over and it will live on yeah and yeah. that's same with United Cassettes and possibly even with Z tapes at mm. some point like when I decide like okay step down or whatever mm. so that's that's one reason but I, I wouldn't start anything else it's like yeah uh even like having I was thinking about having a second like kind of digital label to accommodate more music and I was like mm, yep. we have the branches but they're kind of living on kind of separate own life they are mm. more like separate labels but they use our brand and we help each other but i would i wouldn't do anything or more i'm, I'm doing too, too much already so yeah i don't need more in my life so you have um los angeles and is it latin america yes yeah and that's really cool i think that there's so they i didn't actually realize until recently that they're run are they run by different people yes but are you like you know are you like at the top and they report i just yeah i'm interested in how that works uh it's basically, just the name yeah ba basically it was like they they wanted to use the like the name as as a mm -hmm. as a brand or something that kind of give it some credit and um, i'm involved more in like kind of advisory or i'm i'm trying to kind of not overlook, uh, but help them to kind of navigate. Okay, so mm -hmm. what to do next, or how to do it, and what they should focus on. What is good, maybe strategy. What, what is worth trying, and also like financially, if they need any help, like to invest in like pressings or whatever. Okay, I'm down for that, and I will I will do my do my best to help you with promoting and etc but the driving power is inside the branch and that's that's how i want to do it like okay i don't want to i don't want to have have it as something that i'm responsible for hmm. I'm, I'm just like the help i can offer hmm. or behind it but not at something that even manage it or okay every, everything has to be run by me like no hmm. Uh, but they'll, they'll all feed each other though, won't they? Yeah. Like all three will sort of, if someone yeah. discovers these tapes, Los Angeles, they're going to come back to the other two. So Yeah, yeah. Yeah, that's 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 what is the goal with all this, like to create a network of small kind of labels or whatever that are kind of connected to each other and helping each other and sharing information or sharing fans or sharing di distribution or whatever and maybe maybe it will not work as planned because you know like who knows like what the people behind it will be doing in a few years but i i don't know like it's it was just an idea that was kind of brought to me and i said yes but to do it i'm 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 into it but it was not something that I really wanted to. Okay, I want to do this, and I found the right people. You know, it was like That's interesting, yeah, yeah. And I, I'm still surprised that people want to have it, and their kind of Z tapes it is an honor for me. And yeah. I, I don't believe it like that's happening, but still, still for me, it's like um, something that that is extra and. I, I'm not really kind of, I will not push the people like um, mm. do more or like do your own thing. And if you feel like doing this, do this. 
if you feel like approaching bands or releasing cassettes or I can help you out, but hmm. I will not push you to anything. That's exciting, definitely. Yeah. So we'll see, like, who knows, like, what is the future for this project? Because it depends on the people. So hmm. maybe, maybe we will have like kind of more branches like this, maybe more locally based ones. Hmm. But we'll see, like, it depends on the people who will run. Yeah. And it is, from my experience, it is a lot of energy you have to put in. So hmm. it's not for all people or for future. So. So that's that. It's a little bit complicated to explain it because uh, yeah, it's that's interesting. Yeah, it's not. I find label running interesting in general. Like I've read quite a lot. Like I've read, I read um, a book about 4AD, the label, and that was really interesting. I find yeah, it's just interesting the different approaches and yeah, yeah it's a creative project in itself. You know what what you put out, how you do it, and you know the risks you have to take and you know sometimes you take you know the calculating the risks and stuff all of that sounds really interesting to me yeah. but yeah. stressful as well <laughs> i try to ignore that <laughs> yeah <laughs> there's there's no risk for me um yeah it's yeah that's that's my kind of me being silly with the z tapes yeah. but usually i just go with with the things i like and i trust yeah. i trust maybe my taste or whatever i trust that my kind of knowledge is enough to kind of pursue whatever i want so mm. uh, it's great um so like what what is your plan with like your music for the next maybe months or years like so do you want to work um more or well it's difficult because of covid i mean ideally I'd love to play shows. Um, I've really missed that. I haven't played a show since Feb last uh, February 2020. We have, I have some shows booked with my other band, but whether or not they'll happen, I don't know. Um, so in normal times, I would love to just focus on playing live, but I think realistically, I just need to keep writing when I can and have use the time basically as long I just want to use the time wisely if we're not able to play live still then at least focus on writing and I don't I mean people are starting to book shows but I, st I don't know I still think that it could change again I don't think the, the world is out of the woods with the situation at all so um but yeah I hope it, be, I hope it comes back because I, I didn't realize how much of my social life is playing live and like hanging out with people is when I play live or go to see a show. I didn't appreciate them enough when they were there, I think. So that's my plan, just to work and stuff, but hopefully play shows. Cool. So yeah. for example, what has changed for you like uh, during the COVID? Like, for example, especially in terms of music, like I remember more creative or listen to more music or how that shaped you or changed you i think i'm actually less definitely less creative um so much of my so many of my ideas come from talking to people and overhearing human beings talking and just doing boring stuff so when when i'm locked in a room just with a with a guitar i can I can kind of, I mean, sometimes recently I have actually come up with good ideas, I think, but it definitely, it hasn't been some amazing creative opportunity for me, which I thought it would be. I thought when lockdown happened, I thought, great, maybe I can squeeze another album out quicker than I thought, but no, it still will always take ages, I think, to make good things. Me personally, I don't know how people, um, there's a musician I like, who's sort of in a similar genre, who put out three albums in the last I think it's like 18 months. I do not understand how a human being can do that. I think it's amazing. Um, I'm a very slow writer, so I, but I would say it's probably had a damaging effect. I don't feel like it's been a good thing at all. Um, yeah, I need boring everyday life, I think. So besides playing shows, what is, what is something that you really miss doing? Uh, coffee shops. <laughs> sitting in a coffee shop and 
wishing that wishing I could drink more coffee. I can't drink too much because it makes me too jittery, but it's my like favorite combination of flavors in the world. So yeah, I miss that. Watch sitting, watching the world go by out of a coffee shop. That that and playing gigs are the two things for me. Oh, yeah. And travel. Sorry, I forgot about that. And yeah. and, going, yeah. and travel. I see. I've forgotten what travel is. <laughs> yeah. This. Yeah. Obviously. Yeah. Sorry. <laughs> travel and coffee shops and gigs. Those three things. Yeah. With my wife, we usually when we visit towns, we go for coffee shops. So mm. yeah. it's always coffee hunting. So yeah, definitely, I could relate to that. Yeah. Very much. And so, like. If you go to shows like, for example, in Brighton or your area, uh, do you go like to all different genres, or do you like prefer to go like, for example, to metal or? Um, no, I go to all sorts of things. So I did go to all sorts of things. Um, there's a good alternative. There's, in general, Brighton's got a very good music scene. I'd say. Yeah. It's not. You know, it's not as big as London, obviously, or Manchester, but considering the size of the city, because it's a small city, it's not, there's not even like a, a skyscraper or anything in Brighton. There's hardly any, it's not a built up area. It's not, it doesn't feel like a big city. And um, given that, I think it's got an amazing music scene, actually. And a lot of venues. I mean, it's, it's sadly, I think it's going to be very different when, when we go back. And look at what venues are still there. I, I'm a bit worried about what is actually going to be left. But there's a good, um, there's a big sort of indie scene. There's a big, well, I say big, there's just, there's everything. I mean, I've been to ambient shows. I've been, to, and bigger bands come as well. I've seen Slow Dive in Brighton, one of my favorite bands. Um, it's a, yeah, it's a good place with a lot of, I think you'd find most things you want to listen to in Brighton. Yeah, I, I used to live in London for a while, uh, for half a year, and I kind of, my goal was, or I was thinking about moving to Brighton. Really? Yeah, because I, I thought that it would be really interesting to live yeah. there. And Did you visit? I, yeah, I've been there, uh, but just like for for short visit when I was in, in kind of on the coast there in Hastings, actually. I love I think Hastings is underrated. Oh, yeah. I, I underrated was, town. Yeah, I, I was a teenager at that yeah. point, so it was a long time ago. But, oh, uh, yeah. Like, Brighton is, like, kind of city I could image. Hmm. Like, imagine myself, like, living there and, like, kind of being active in the scene. But um, Hastings has got a pretty respectable arts and music history as well like um you know nick drake famous folk singer from the 70s he he would hang out he went and hung out in hastings quite a lot because he had friends there so it's mm -hmm. it's quite i think hastings is quite a special place as well on the coast it's not too far from brighton but yeah it's overshadowed by brighton a bit i think yeah so maybe last two questions like mm -hmm. if there was any other country where you would like to live or like kind of be, like, uh, well, be part of music community there well i'm i'm half irish so definitely ireland okay. um just because i love it there um and probably germany i've enjoyed going to germany mm -hmm. i like the forests um yeah i'm gonna go for that probably cool. ireland and germany Cool, interesting. And and one last question, like, what is like maybe a recommendation for free bands that people should check out? Like your kind of personal favorites right now. Um, I'm gonna pronounce his name wrong, so I'm really sorry if I do. As a as a French musician in Lyon called Raoul Vignol. Mm -hmm. And He's very underrated. I can't. I think I discovered him because my EP a few years ago was reviewed on a website, and his album was reviewed on the website. But his song um, "No Faith" there's a beautiful live version of it on YouTube. But it's I'm not joking. It's in my top 
50 songs ever made it could it could probably end up in my top 20 songs ever made i think it's inc- i think it's a very underrated guy um that was one who else have i discovered recently i'm trying to think of recent people would well, you i like joya on um z tapes a lot i think joya are great man i find this a hard question it's a hard question there's too much good music in the world. Oh yeah, I know. Um, so I've said two. I can't do it. I don't. I actually don't think I can do it. There's too much good music in the world. Um, mm-hmm. There's a folky guy I like in Australia. I think you may have heard him, uh, D. E. Kennedy. Mm-hmm. I think he's underrated as well. I think he he has some really special songs. Like some of them I listen to, and I'm like, how how did this happen? It's really cool. Mm-hmm. <laughs> really interesting music. I think. That, okay, there you go. That's my three. Okay, cool. Good <laughs> okay, perfect. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. We've been like kind of overreaching our limit, but yeah, I could talk to you forever. So <laughs> it's it's it was fun to make this. And yeah, thank you. I will thank all people who are watching this and checking out even our other episodes with other artists from our roster and. I'm excited to be doing this and I hope you will enjoy it. Please let, know, let us know any feedback or any comments or whatever and just stay safe and stay strong and see you later. Bye.